blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them And I got eyes in the back of my head I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite, they feeling I could tell you Hello there my name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. I feel led by the Holy Spirit to do this video, how to effectively share God's story, because there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. Now, first, God... Almighty wants us to know that he has given us a commission to preach the gospel. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it reads, And he said unto them, that's Jesus, And Jesus said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says in verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So that commission came from our Lord and Savior. And even if you're not a preacher, we all are to have a share in spreading the gospel. That's right. But it is not our job to get anybody to receive it. Only the Holy Spirit can open up a person's heart to receive the gospel. The gospel is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the gospel in a nutshell. Jesus Christ came into this world that he had a share in creating with the Father and the Holy Spirit to die for the fallen human race because we're all born in sin shaped in iniquity because of the failure of our foreparents Adam and Eve he came to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven and have an opportunity to be saved into his eternal kingdom and experience everlasting life that's the gospel in a nutshell now if people receive it and get baptized they're going to be saved that means they're going to give their life to the Lord and allow the Lord to change their wicked hearts and mold them into the type of people they're supposed to be. But if they reject it, they're going to continue on that course to the grave and then into the fires of hell. So that is what the Bible teaches, and we're all supposed to have a share in spreading that message. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul wrote to Timothy and us, Preach the word. That's the Holy Bible. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, there are people out there who have different gifts. They're not preachers like me. That's why I said we're all to have a share in spreading the gospel in whatever way God says you're supposed to do it. Everybody's not a preacher like me, but God will show you how he wants you to spread the gospel. For example, and I'm not just trying to pedal my shirt, something as simple as my God wear t-shirt here, which says Jesus said preach the gospel, 
And on the back, I have those verses that I read in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16 on the back of the shirt. Now, I could just be walking down the street or you could be walking down the street with some God wear on. And the Lord can use something like this to plant a seed of truth in the heart of somebody who's lost. Okay, so we all are to have a share in spreading that gospel. We all have different gifts, the Bible tells us. In 1 Corinthians 12, I'm going to start at verse 27. It says, now ye, or you are the body of Christ and members in particular. That's believers, wherever they are. That's what makes up the church of Jesus Christ, not buildings. Buildings are just places where the church meets, okay? He says in verse 28, that was 27. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, which is what I am. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. That means the ability to speak many different languages. He says in verse 29, are all apostles? And the answer to that question is no. Are all prophets? The answer to that question is no. Are all teachers? The answer to that question is no. Are all workers of miracles? No. Verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing? Nope. Do all speak with tongues? Nope. Do all interpret? No. 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way. And then when he went into the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he started talking about how love is the most important thing, okay? So Paul shows us shows us in more than one place in Scripture that we're not all called to do the same thing. Now, I would never question what somebody feels that God has called them to do. That's none of my business. We're going to look at a couple of verses of Scripture where God tells you exactly how you're supposed to do it. First of all, you need to go out there understanding that when they reject the message, they're rejecting God, the Father, and Jesus. And if they hear the message, they're receiving God, the Father, and Jesus Christ. That's why in Luke 10, verse 16, Jesus said, He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. So that's the first thing you need to understand if God sends you out to preach, that it's not personal. And in scripture, every time Paul and them went somewhere and preached, if it wasn't received, the Lord moved them, told them to go somewhere else. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, Jesus said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you, which means rip you up. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying don't even waste your time trying to preach the gospel to people that don't want to hear it. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 14, Jesus said, And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, listen, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. He said, they won't receive the message, leave and don't come back. Because every time in the Bible, when Paul and the others were met with opposition, the Lord moved them to the next place. See, God ain't playing. He's about winning souls. He wouldn't have you going somewhere where he's not opening hearts for people to receive it. He will constantly move you if you're called to do this street evangelism or missionary work. He will constantly move you where he's going to open people's hearts to receive the message. Acts chapter 17 verse 4 says, And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. So God would constantly lead Paul and them to certain places to preach the gospel where he had opened their people's heart to receive it. Verse 5 says, But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company 
and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. This is what's going to happen. Anytime you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, Satan is going to move his people to come and try to stop that message from going forth. So that's to be expected. Everywhere the Lord led Paul and the others to preach, Satan had his deceived Jews to come and raise hell. Acts chapter 17 verse 10 says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now notice when those Jews started raising hell in that other place and got the whole city riled up, Paul and them were moved somewhere else. They went to Berea. Acts 17 verse 13 says, But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. So that's to be expected when you're preaching the gospel. Anyway, in Acts chapter 18 verse 6, it says, And when they opposed themselves, these are people that Paul and them were preaching to, and blasphemed, he shook his raiment, his clothing, and said unto unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth or from this time forward. I will go unto the Gentiles. So there will come a time if you are called to do this street evangelism um, or missionary work where you're sent out to preach. When they reject it, you're going to shake the dust off your feet and you're going to move on. You're not going to keep coming back to the same place over and over and over again according to scripture, because God ain't got you out there just to waste time. He has you out there to win souls. So when we jump down to verse 9 in Acts 18, it says, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. He said to Paul, Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Don't hold your peace. 10. For I am with thee. I'm with you, and no man shall set on thee or you to hurt thee. They hurt you, for I have much people in this city. 11. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Now, notice God will tell you exactly where you're supposed to be, and you will bear fruit because he has told you to be there. All throughout the book of Acts, we see the Spirit of God leading the apostles to where God had opened the heart of someone to receive it, not going where people don't want it at all, okay? I'm just telling you what the Bible says now. Acts 8 talks about the Ethiopian eunuch that was coming back from Jerusalem. He had been converted to the religion of Judaism, but he didn't know about Christ, and he was reading the book of Isaiah, and he didn't understand who it was talking about. And Acts 8, 29 says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself, or join yourself to this chariot. So the Holy Spirit led Philip to that Ethiopian eunuch, and he said, do you know what you're reading? He said, no. He said, come up. He said, come up here and help me. And the Lord used Philip to help him understand who Jesus was. And then, after he understood it, he even baptized him before Philip was taken away to go do something else for God. So the Spirit of God will guide you where you're supposed to preach. And not only that, it'll tell you exactly what you're supposed to say to people. Acts 10, verse 19 says, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee, or three men seek you. Verse 20, The Spirit said to Peter, Arise therefore and get thee down. Arise and you get down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And this is when God... Holy Spirit was telling Peter to go and preach to Cornelius, who was an Italian, and, you know, Gentile. And Peter didn't even know what he was going to say to him until he got there. And then it was revealed to him that the vision he saw was saying that God was about to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. So there's plenty of scripture that tells you how to be an effective witness or preacher. But a lot of people don't adhere to the scripture. They, they want to do something for, for God, so they just get up and they just start doing something. And then Satan is deceiving them. Now, David Lynn is not as bad as the West 
Borough Baptist Church pe people. They have big signs with hateful things on them, and they out there really thinking that they're doing the work of God and they're doing the work of the devil. No, I did a video on that. Uh, that's why it's so important that you know your, the Bible for yourself. So the Bible makes it clear that there's a right way and a wrong way to spread God's message. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 to 26, it says, And the servant of the Lord must not stride. We shouldn't be out here struggling and fighting with people to try to get the point across. But be gentle unto all men. We're supposed to be gentle, apt to teach, patient, 25, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure or perhaps will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken by him at his will. Now notice how we're supposed to operate even when we're sharing the gospel with people. And so it's very important that you and I understand something in closing. Everybody's not going to be saved. So the Bible makes it clear that more people are going to end up in hell than in heaven. That's right. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, he says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. You see that? He says in verse 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Very few. And in Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 and 12, Jesus said, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And then he says in verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man and woman according as his or her work shall be. So that's exactly what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be led by God's Holy Spirit in what we do for him. He will tell us where to go and what to do. New heaven and new earth belongs to us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. Forget this old messed up, disease infested, wicked, decaying world that we're living in now. The only thing that will get you into the kingdom is understanding that Jesus Christ paid it all. That's that right. his blood purchased eternal salvation for every last one of us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish. Not whosoever will do good works, but whosoever will believe on him would not perish. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. And then some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. Patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now. Here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints.
pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. Send it to bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And last but not least, if you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store. Check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.